So Inventing the AIDS Virus by Peter H. Duesberg. Um, this is a book I read about three years ago. wasn't really aware of what he was talking about, aware of the context that it was written at, but I uh, had seen Kerry Mullis give a forwarding to it, and I really liked Kerry Mullis's, um, just his brain in general. Uh, so I figured I'd do a book review on it. For the presentation and the formatting of the book, it's written for someone who's a layperson. It's not written to appeal to a science-oriented audience so much, but I think that's ironic because I was the only person who really would probably enjoy reading it are people who are science-oriented people who really see the logical steps that he takes into it. The wording of it and the structure of it is very well organized. I really liked it. Um, I never had any issue with the diction that he was using or the context, the way that he went about writing it. Um, the formatting of it was really well done. Uh, the chapters flow nicely from one point to the next. He kind of starts off talking about just the uh, history of diseases and the history of the germ theory of disease um, and subjected to the success of that and kind of how about how the success of that led to a bias uh, into the formatting that we kind of forget to think about other dynamic factors, as I like to call them, or linear disease models. Um, this is, if you've seen my video on Cook's postulates where I talk about linear disease models, that's where this came from. That's when I was thinking about that whenever I read this book. So yeah, it flows really well from the beginning uh, to the ending. The pacing of it is pretty good. Uh, the only issue that I had with it was towards the end, it gets a little redundant. Um, uh, in context of it, I wasn't really that interested in the social structures and the social aspects that the gay rights movement had on rushing FDA approval for AIDS treatments. Um, the sources that he cites are actually accredited and there are pretty decent uh, citing. I didn't go through every single one of them because that's like literally half the book by mass is just his sources cited, but a lot of it I did see some from the journal Nature, some from the journal Science, from the Lancet. So, you know, it wasn't, uh, people try to dismiss this as pseudoscience a lot of times, and I really don't, I don't consider it that way. It's just looking at the scientific facts from a different perspective, and I, I really like that. And then there's the fact that it was really just entertaining, <laughs> which is the reason why I think anyone would read a book ever. It's, it's pretty out there. I mean, he makes some pretty hardcore claims, some pretty drastic claims, but I think that this is one of the most stimulating books that I've ever read because he questions something that is so well established and so well formatted into place. And he brings up the bias that a lot of companies do have um, in terms of manufacturing drugs, in terms of the bias that people have to do research for the NIH, um, this kind of this narrowing of the general consensus. And historically speaking, the general consensus among scientists has always been wrong. I, I, I can't give enough recommendation to this book because I really did enjoy it. Uh, the only issue that I had with it would be that there are certain points where he really made extremely good points, um, points that were really well um, thought out, really well founded, and I wish that he would have stuck with that. A lot of people who are critical of his ideas haven't actually read his book. I can, I can say that because I have read his book, and he kind of points to this, this step of how we reach these conclusions that we've reached and the fact that we don't consider other factors, that we don't even look at diseases uh, as, as complex things. We look at them as I get infected with one type of a microbe and that's the result of it. The only part that I didn't quite like was where he kind of felt the need to go above and beyond that and consider explaining the, you know, the socioeconomic statuses, the uh, political factors at the time, um, and then kind of getting into basically the other lesser half of it is really just kind of him talking about all the shit that he got just for, for saying this, for having a controversial view. Um, nevertheless, I would totally recommend this to anyone who's studying molecular biology, who's studying microbiology, who's really serious about understanding diseases and really um, just anything that's going to make you look at things from different perspectives. Um, I'm not saying that I really agree with everything that he says in this book. Um, there are certain parts of the things where he was saying that I, I kind of took issue with um, in terms of his proposed explanation for what would result in these conclusions here and uh, kind of some epidemiological stuff that it's like, you know, whatever. But at the end of the day, I, I really enjoyed this book. It's a really good read. And I gave it a final score of 8 out of 10 because 
it is just so thought stimulating. It is so thought provoking. And it's not pseudoscience. It's not uh, just crazy batshit stuff out there. He has points that he has formatted and reasonings that he has to go about it. For certain parts of the book, there was a little bit of anecdotal evidence in there, and I kind of fucking hate seeing that. But for a book, for entertaining reads, if you want to read something that's going to make you question things, if you want to read something that's going to make you second guess, establish disease models as they are, which is what you should be doing, if you want to be a serious scientist, then you should definitely read this book. I'm probably going to get a lot of hate for this, but you know what? This is just a very good book. I don't agree with everything Peter Duesberg says in it, but it was a very entertaining read, and it really shaped my foundational understanding of how to assess situations.